Hey good people, it is Tishire from Politics and Fashion here today with a video that is all about my practical tips to curb your shopping. Now before I even get started, let me say this. I know a lot about having a shopping addiction. I was a self-diagnosed mall junkie and shopping addict. Hi, my name is Tashira and I have a shopping addiction. I'm, I'm still in recovery. I'm still in recovery from this addiction. Um, and so as a result, the things that I'm going to share with you today are tried and true tips that I have implemented into my own life and saw good results from. And if you are in a season of life, friend, where you are ready to shop less and enhance your style, then you have made it to the right place. Welcome to the tribe. Go ahead and subscribe, friend, okay? I don't want you to miss anything. Also, follow me over on TikTok and also on Instagram for daily style and self-care inspiration. And let's get started with today's video. Now before I get started, let me just share with you what I am wearing today. It is my outfit of the day or OOTD. I am wearing this top by Pixie Market. I love the clavicle moment and also the fact that it is reversible. If it is still available, I will certainly link it down below. I am wearing my Valentino V logo belt. This one is reversible. One side is a textured leather in black and the other side is cream. I am wearing my shorts, my high-waisted Bermudas from Fendi. And then for jewelry, I'm wearing the same well hoops that you all see all the time. Black owned designers today are the Nature the Label ring on my index finger and also on my necklace. This one is called the Divine Feminine Necklace. As well as, you all go up for this, the Charm Bracelet, which some of you all were able to grab recently by Free Maiden, Cartier Just Done Clue, Bust Down Wrist, period. Okay, and that is today's OOTD. Let's get into these tips, girl. Now my first practical tip to curb your shopping is undoubtedly the easiest. Anyone can do this without hesitation. And that is to unsubscribe from emails. Friend, unsubscribe, unsubscribe. Not from mine, not from mine, but from theirs. Unsubscribe, <laughs> okay? <laughs> because very often we are being spammed by companies. And let me just say this, emails exist to move you to action. From a copy editing standpoint, from a marketing standpoint, these are not just kind of like fly by night emails that someone sends you, no. These are very calculated messages that find their way into our inbox that companies know are going to convert to a sale eventually. Now I wanna share this with you as a content creator and as a business owner because I have the other side of the perspective on this one, okay? Uh, I know and I have been trained and taught that people purchase from emails at a much, much, much higher rate than they do any other form of communication. Whether you are looking at a actual physical magazine and you see an advertisement, whether you see it on social media, whether you see it on YouTube and it's linked in the description box, all of those things are gonna pale in comparison to the quickness by which we all will purchase something in an email. I wish I knew the psychology behind it. If you know, let us know down below because I find it so interesting. But there is something about an email that is gonna convert you to a sale at a higher rate. As a result, being on 25 million companies email list is a danger when you were trying to curb your shopping because you may not buy something Monday, you may not buy it Tuesday, you may not buy it Wednesday, and mind you, you're probably getting emails from the same companies on a daily basis, but eventually you will buy and they know that, especially because they're also tracking the open rate. So the emails that have a particular title or description, that little preview that you see in Google, they know which ones you are more likely to open and the ones that you are not. And so it's all of this data that is being collected around our habits that then drive our consumption. Email is once again not happenstance. Trust me, it is very, very calculated. And that is why you find yourself buying things that you didn't even intend to buy because you've gotten 15 emails this week from Target. Sis, unsubscribe, unsubscribe. And now if you're anything like me, there are certain brands, especially smaller brands or more boutique-like brands that I have been hesitant to unsubscribe from because I thought to myself, oh my God, what if I don't know what's going on and I miss the thing and it's a new thing and I ain't gonna have the thing? 
that is a scarcity mindset. And what we have to believe is that our style is so fly, our style is so clutch, and so when that piece that we are supposed to have that needs to be in our wardrobe, it will show up. What they say, when the, when the student is ready, the teacher will appear. When your closet is ready, the piece shall appear. We don't need to be on Nordstrom's email list to find the hottest pair of boots. If that is what you were setting in, a, in intention around, trust me, you will find them. Especially if you are someone who is struggling to curb this habit, it is almost like putting crack in front of a crack addict. Girl, get off the emails. Just get off the emails today. Report down below whether or not you have done it. My second practical tip to curb your shopping is to not fall victim to sales. And this actually is very similar to the tip I have around unsubscribing because often a lot of the messaging that we're getting is 30% off today only, right? It is this amount of urgency that our brains have around the sale because we think if I don't buy this while it's on sale, it's going to eventually not be on sale. And let me also share with you a tip as well around branding, marketing, and how a lot of these businesses work, especially fast fashion retailers. Here's the gag, sis. The item was never full price. Louder for the people in the back, the item was never, it was never full price. They are using this as a technique to drive a sale. So from this perspective in these first two tips, this is not behavior, honestly, that we are even conscious of, right? In a capitalist and highly consumerist society, we are actually being fed these things that are manipulating our psychology. <laughs> and they know that. The piece won never full price. And that is true for many of these fast fashion brands. That's number one. Number two, if it is a true sale, I have found that I always tend to spend more if I'm shopping just because something is on sale versus shopping with intention because I actually want the item and I'm able to then, you know, hit a quick lick like, oh, I always wanted this sweater, this shirt, this pair of pants, and now look, it is on sale for 30, 40, 50% off. That is very much true for me in the Black Friday sales. Another uh, round of sales that I do tend to shop as well, y'all, are the Sephora sales, the Beauty Insider sales, right? Because those are things that I buy, and I'm very intentional about this, that I would have bought for full price anyway. So why not stock up when they're on sale? Because most of the brands do not have sales, okay? So those are examples of when I think, at least for me personally, it is okay to shop sale. However, you often see these Memorial Day sales, the Valentine's Day sale, the Mother's Day sale, girl, the Monday sale. And I will say this, if you have a fear of losing money, if you don't shop a sale, just know that you're actually saving money if you never intended to spend it. Do you see what I'm saying? Does that make sense? What has happened is these retailers have convinced us that we're saving by spending. Make that math make sense. Because when I logged onto this computer, I didn't intend to buy anything. <laughs> I just saw someone talking about a sale, I just got an email about a sale, and all of a sudden I am a hundred and fifty US dollars deep into this thing about something that I never even intended to buy. So actually, I have spent unnecessarily. I have shopped unnecessarily. I have shopped without intention. And you know we don't want no parts of that life, okay? That is not the ministry that we are on over here. So please, don't let these sales fool you, sis. I used to work in luxury retail. And it would be so frustrating when people came into my boutique. Uh, we would have a great rapport. They would see a piece that they absolutely loved. And then they say, okay, thank you. I'm going to go over and buy it from Saks. Because if I use my Saks card, they're going to give me $300 off. And it got to the point where I just stopped explaining to people that that's not actually how it worked. <laughs> that what Saks was likely going to do was give you a $300 credit to spend in store. 
And what they did that for is because they know, based upon your spending profile and how people spend in a luxury environment, that whatever you were going to buy next was going to be much more than $300. And by giving you that credit, you were more likely to spend. And so they have you on a hamster wheel of buy, 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 because you think you're saving when you are actually spending walk away sis walk away now I don't want anyone to hear me and think that I'm saying you should buy everything full price clearly not who doesn't want to save coin what I am saying however is shop with intention because if you weren't going to buy it full price then you don't need to buy it on sale friend now this third tip this third tip I'm gonna be honest y'all um it burns my biscuits and there are few things that upset me and my homegirl more than more than this. I would probably put ranch salad dressing and then like cis hetero patriarchy. They're kind of like interchangeable. But this 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 thing is on the list. It's in the top three. And that is our propensity to buy duplicates. If you are someone who is struggling with shopping likely you have duplicates of items in your wardrobe and i mean this twofold number one there are those of us who actually have an issue with consuming the same thing in multiple colors in multiple sizes and multiple patterns okay that obviously can become an issue unless you were a collector you know i, I can't say for you what brings you joy but that likely can become a problem because we are overspending by buying the same thing in multiple colorways. The second thing though I think we do and we do this one unknowingly and that is that we purchase things that serve a duplicitous purpose in our wardrobe. Okay we got five black handbags that are a medium size with a top handle. They don't all look the same but they all serve the same purpose. We got five pair of loafers all black. They don't all look the same, but they serve the same purpose. Do, do you see where I'm going? There are embellishments that are different. There are leather types that are different. But at the end of the day, whatever I would wear one pair with, I would wear pair two through five with. So why do I got five of them? Why? Make it make sense. And I am someone who has struggled with this personally, as I have said at the beginning of the video. And I almost got caught up. I almost got caught slipping recently. I was in Mexico and I went into Hermes. You know, it's a tradition. If you are an Hermes lover, you better go into an Hermes boutique when whatever country, city, state you were in because you never know what you might find, okay? So I hop in there and I do find something different, okay? I wear a size 42, 41, 42. And so that means I can wear the men's shoes. And I see a pair of men's espadrilles and they are in a tan color and um, I've never seen them before. They are the men's, men's Orans in particular. And I love Orans and I tried them on and immediately I sent a text to the group text, you know, group chat. And I said, friends, to all, all, all my friends, I said, should I get these? They said, yes. I said, do they look like my Fendi Field sandals? I'll put up a picture of my Fendi Fields. They said, no. I said, okay, thank you. I sat there and I debated and I debated. And ultimately, I realized the reason I had even had that idea was not because the shoes looked the same, which was the question that I asked my friends, so they answered truthfully, but because the shoes would have served the same purpose in my wardrobe because the espadrilles were men's sandals they were a little bit wider a little bit more chunky they were tan my fendi feel sandals have a birkenstock feel they're chunky they're in neutral colors they're primarily tan i would wear both of these shoes in the same way so from that perspective why have both why have both? And again, I think this is an issue that can be very insidious. It is very subtle. And we may not even realize that we are 
doing it, right? We don't even realize because we like the same things. We like what we like. And there is a reason why we are going to gravitate towards the same style handbag, the same style shoe, the same style pants over and over and over again. And it's up to us to do the work to realize when we have begun to duplicate categories of items in order to curb our shopping. And tip number four to curb your shopping is to shop your closet. To shop your closet. Now, for the more is more style pillar that I talk about in my latest ebook, How to Declutter Your Wardrobe and Curate a Style You Love, uh, you all probably need to literally, literally do that because I bet you have clothes in your closet with tags on them. Don't tell me that you don't because I know. I know that you do. Uh, for those of us who don't necessarily have brand new pieces, it does not mean we are not off the hook. It does not mean that we don't still need to get into our closet and shake things up a bit. I mean, monotony is real. We have survived an entire pandemic out here, something that the human species has not seen for centuries, okay? So as a result, I think we all could use a refresh. We all could use the opportunity to go into our closet and rethink how we put things together and how we style pieces. I actually have a video coming up. I haven't filmed it yet, so I don't know if it's gonna come out before or after this one, all about what I call stealing her style. So being inspired by some of my favorite street style pics on Pinterest or my favorite content creators and using their outfits as ways to give me new and creative ideas about how to pair similar pieces together in my own wardrobe. Sometimes our brains are craving a flood of serotonin that shopping brings, right? But I don't feel like shopping is the only way to get that if you are someone who has a brain that is wired much like mine. When I get that urge, what I'm really seeking is a need for creativity, a need for a feeling of accomplishment, a need to look in the mirror and feel like I look good, right? Well, I can get all of those things by finding new ways to wear what I already have. And in the video that I just mentioned to you all, a good example of that is my Loewe Obi belt. This belt has been the bane of my existence. It has been the bee in my bonnet. It is probably the most expensive thing I have in my wardrobe right now that I do not get nearly enough wear out of. Well, in preparing for that video, I was able to find style inspiration around how to wear it in a way that made sense to me. I recently watched back one of my old videos where I said very directly, that belt don't look good with tailored trousers then I see a picture of somebody wearing it with tailored trousers and it's a bust down look. <laughs> so again, I get the gratification now. I get the joy, the creativity that came from me being able to unlock my wardrobe to the next level. Girl, if it was Super Mario Brothers, we would have just saved the queen. I want you to save the queen. And I know you can do it. Shop that closet, sis. And my last practical tip to curb your spending is to have a plan for your wardrobe. And by that I mean this. I like to think of our closet as maps. Sometimes very literal maps because you tend to put certain items in certain places, right? But also metaphorical maps. They are all going to help you to get to whatever your desired destination is. Every piece will help you get to whatever your desired destination is. Whether you're going out, you're going to work, you're taking your kids to the playground. Every piece kind of fits together in order to get you to your destination, okay? And along the road, there may be a couple signs that are missing because you don't have the right elements in your wardrobe. There may be a couple trees that have fallen down because you have pieces that need to be repaired or that have gone on to glory. Like I like to say, they have served their purpose, right? But we still have a map. Now, whether or not the map is functioning and functional, or maybe it needs to be updated a little bit, depends on us. But there are pieces that are going to naturally flow and fit together, again, to get us to our destinations. As a result, what that means is, could you imagine if someone handed you a map 
and either it was completely incorrect, the roads were not clear, you didn't know where north, south, east, or west is, right? You would be like, what is this? What am I even gonna, this ain't gonna, I'm trying to get, I'm trying to follow the yellow brick road. I'm trying to get the odds, okay? This is not, it's not helping me do anything. And that is how I think sometimes we see our closets, right? The map is just completely unclear. And instead of slowing down and actually figuring out where is north, where is south, where is east, where is west, right? Instead of us figuring out what roads are going to lead where, where are the intersections? There is more than one way to get to where we want to go. What's the long way? What's the short way? Instead of us figuring that out, we instead just go and buy another map. And that map too is unclear. And then we buy another map. And then we buy, you see where I'm going? So we have so many pieces that in this analogy or in this metaphor, we truly cannot see the forest for the trees. This is why you're buying duplicates, because you don't know what's in your closet. Let's just be honest. Let's, let's, I'm, listen, I told you I love you, and I love you enough to tell you the truth. You don't know what's in there. You don't. You are packing things away. You are storing things. You are not decluttering. You have no idea. You have no plan for your personal style. You have no plan for your wardrobe. And as a result, you are caught up in the rat race, in the hamster wheel of shopping because you were not aware of how you were gonna get from point A to point B in your personal style. We'll keep it a stack, sis. I like to think an easy solution for this, y'all, is having a capsule wardrobe which requires for you to mentally or actually literally, right, write down and plan your outfits. Really be deliberate and calculated about how your wardrobe is interchangeable and how pieces fit together. If you want to know more about a capsule wardrobe, please click down in the description box any of the capsule wardrobe videos. I guarantee you they will help you and I have a new one coming up very soon. But in the meantime, I will just say to spend time in your closet, not only shopping your closet, but also getting to know what is in there so that you can make a style plan. And that is it, good people. I hope today's video has been helpful. There have been a lot of analogies and metaphors in this video. I don't, I guess that's my English teacher coming out. I hope it has <laughs> been edifying and helpful despite that, girl. I, I done gave y'all a whole novel on style, okay? Just call me the Toni Morrison of fashion. That's, I think that's where I am, where I am today. <laughs> Let me get out of here. Let me, I'm, I'm gonna get out of here. Uh, I'm feeling a little giggly. This is the third video I have filmed today and I think I'm just, I'm at capacity, sis. Leave me a comment down below. Let me know what I missed. What has helped you to curb your shopping? Follow me over on Instagram and on TikTok for daily style and self-care inspiration. Subscribe to the channel. As you can see, we have a lot of fun over here and I will see you good people across the internet. Peace.